What does it mean to be great? Artest looking, gets it Brian. Brian dribbling, has to put it up with the buzzer. What does it mean to give your all to something, no matter the outcome? What does it mean to inspire not just those watching you, but those playing with and against you? A one-point game. Walton can tip it. Bryant with the save. Oh, you gotta get a shot here. Final seconds. Bryant for the win. What does it mean to inspire people even after you're done? Ball gets a screen from Odom. Great play by Bryant. Hope you'll take it in. What does it mean to be a legend? Rondo looking. Gets it to Pierce. Pierce turns back out. Rondo fits. Dribbles, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound to Saul. Kicks it out to Otto. Otto throws it ahead. This is the story of Kobe Bryant. We all know Kobe Bryant as one of the greatest basketball players of all time, but in order to ask ourselves how he got to this point, we have to start at the beginning. Uh, my name is Kobe Bryant. I'm 17 years old, and I've been lucky enough to live not only in different parts of the United States, but uh, Europe as well. Kobe Bryant first became interested in the game of basketball when he was three years old. His fascination with the sport came largely from his father, Joe Jelly Bean Bryant, who is an NBA player himself, who also inspired Kobe's middle name, Bean. Bryant puts it on the floor, gets inside of Spencer. Oh! When Joe Bryant retired from the NBA, Kobe's family moved to Italy, where Joe would continue playing professional basketball. Kobe was six years old at the time, and even being so young, his love for the sport only grew. Kobe's grandfather would often send him NBA game tapes from overseas for him to watch and learn as much as he could from them. Grandpa Cox used to uh, record all the games, and uh, he used to box them up and send us copies of them. And I would sit there at home and watch these games over and over and over and over and over and over. This is where he began to develop a love for both the Los Angeles Lakers and Magic Johnson. 12 years in the league, Brad Davis, the ball into Magic Johnson, pass under the top, and he's alone and scores. He's got to Magic Johnson, Magic in the front court, good transition, bounce down the middle, green slammed up. Go away from the man you're intended for. Rebound to Kareem on a missed shot underneath by Harper. The Magic, Magic all the way, give it a word a great pass, he scores. When he was 13 years old, his family moved back to the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and from there, Kobe would finish middle school and move on to high school. Kobe attended Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania, where he truly began to take his basketball game to the next level. He played for the varsity basketball team as a freshman, and even appeared in the starting lineup, making him the first freshman at Lower Marion to start for the varsity team in decades. But this was attributed to his otherworldly work ethic, because at the age of 12, before he started high school, Kobe Bryant played in a summer basketball camp where he played through an entire summer and failed to score a single point. In a very prominent summer league in Philadelphia called the Sunny Hill League, where my father played, my uncle played, and they were like all-time greats yeah. and all stuff. And Will Chamberlain played in the league, you know, uh, Earl of Pro Monroe played in the league. And here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 11, 10, 11. And you're playing against other 10, 11 year olds? Uh -huh. or, and you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How did you not score? Because I was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. From there, Kobe drew inspiration from a quote from his own father, Joe Bryant, after the camp had ended. I remember crying about it, being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. And from there, he drew further inspiration from the great Michael Jordan, who was renowned as one of the hardest workers ever. And from there, he was determined to outwork anyone, no matter what. He showed up to practices up to two hours early. He showed up to the school gym at 5 a.m. And there would even be times where he showed up so early that the team would get to the court and hear a ball bouncing, and they would find a young Kobe Bryant shooting in the dark. 
there were also after-practice traditions, where he would routinely play one-on-one -on -one against various players on the team, in games to 100, with Kobe himself saying the best anyone could ever do against him was 100 to 5. Kobe went on to become one of the best high school players in the country, and was named the Pennsylvania Player of the Year during his junior year of high school, which began to attract the attention of different college recruiters from prestigious schools such as Duke, North Carolina, and Villanova. However, after seeing top high school prospect Kevin Garnett make the leap from high school straight to the NBA in 1995, Kobe began giving that option more thought. In his senior year of high school, Kobe Bryant led the Lower Marion Aces to a 31-3 record and led the team to their first state championship in over 50 years. And he ended his high school career as the leading scorer for Southeastern Pennsylvania, with 2,883 total points, surpassing all-time great and Hall of Fame big man Wilt Chamberlain. But also during his senior year of high school, he was named the Naismith High School Player of the Year and the Gatorade Men's National Player of the Year, and was widely regarded as one of the best high school players ever. But after his senior year of high school, Kobe had a massive decision to make. And during a press conference at the end of the school year, Kobe finally let the world know that his mind was made up. I have a big decision coming up, and that's whether or not I go to college or straight to the NBA. The thing that bothers me the most about this decision is when I'm walking down the street, I'm walking in the mall, I'm going to get a hat or something, and somebody I've never, ever seen before comes up to me and tells me what they want me to do. I'm like, what's going on here? I know you. No, I have decided to skip college and take my talent to the NBA. Before the 1996 NBA draft took place, Kobe had workouts with both the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Lakers, both of whom were extremely impressed with his workout, with Laker manager Jerry West saying he played scrimmages against both Larry Drew and Laker legend Michael Cooper, and that Kobe, quote, marched over these people. But the choice was still difficult to make, as teams were generally interested in players who had gone to college and had more experience. And that's one of the reasons Kobe ended up falling to the pick he was eventually taken at. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Kobe was then traded on draft night from the Charlotte Hornets to the Los Angeles Lakers for Vladi Divac so the Lakers could clear cap space to offer a contract to one of the best big men in the league at the time, Shaquille O'Neal. And even though he was the rookie, Kobe let Shaq know his intentions and his mindset as soon as he got there. Do you remember what you told me one day in the forum when I first met you? You said you were going to be the finish it for me. What, the greatest player of all time? Yes. And even though Kobe had limited minutes in his rookie season, while playing behind all-star guards Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones, he was still able to make an impact on the team and show glimpses of greatness, even as an 18-year-old. The love of the game, the challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play, I'd watch Michael play, and I would see them do these unbelievable things, and I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? The Lakers would then make the playoffs with a 56-26 record and take care of the Portland Trailblazers in the first round of the playoffs, which brought them to the second round where they faced the Utah Jazz. Game 5 was a matchup in which the Jazz were leading the series three games to one, and being without Byron Scott due to injury, Robert Ory due to a fight earlier in the game, and Shaq having fouled out with two minutes left in the game, Kobe Bryant was now the leader of the team on the court. But it would become very apparent that he wasn't yet ready for the moment. So Kobe Bryant, the young rookie straight from high school. Eight seconds left. Bryant, guarded by Russell. Five seconds left. Four. Bryant drives. Pull up. Shot on the way. No good. Carvalho rebounds. He's got overtime. Bounce. Wide right. Van Exel 
Mitchell fakes back away. Passport left, open, goes, and drags the three. Another air ball. He shoots back to back air ball. Jazz basketball. That's hard to believe. Brad Mitchell, yo yo. Brad Mitchell backs it out straight away to Kobe Bryant. Bryant for three. It's Jordan Dia. Air ball. Front court, Jazz with it. Stopped it all over. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Here's a three pointer. Air ball again. Got Kobe Bryant. Another air ball. Four seconds left. It's stopped it. It's over. It's over. I do believe. A lot of guys on our team didn't want it, but you wanted it at, at a ATV on it. That's why in the Utah game, everybody talks about those air balls. I wasn't mad at you. And that's why I was the first one to come grab you and say, hey, I know everybody's laughing and giggling out, but one day people will fear you mm -hmm. at the end of the game. And I got home, it's probably like three in the morning. And I went down to the high school, which is down the street from our house. And the janitor let me in the gym. And I shot all day, all day. I mean, all day. And this was right after that playoff game. And um, I didn't leave the gym. I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and practicing and practicing. Coming into the next two seasons, Kobe Bryant was an improved player. And with the Lakers having traded both Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones, Kobe was now the main shooting guard and the main option alongside Shaq. And he would finally be able to show his abilities on the court, with one of those opportunities being a game in late 1997 against one of his childhood idols, Michael Jordan. So the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. And I would tell him, i say, when I face him, we're gonna go at it. He says, oh, you don't wanna do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. Oh, oh, oh. There it is. Maybe better than a lot of backups in the NBA center. Kobe Bryant, Fisher inside. Fall away by Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is guarded by Michael Jordan. And a fall away by Kobe Bryant. 26 number to shout about. Little advice from the master. 31 after establishing a career high of 23. Kobe Bryant with his second three-point basket now with 24 points. Turn it over to the Lakers and here's Bryant. Wow. You're not intimidating me. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level of respect because I think he was the same way at 18 years old. And that common bond is what I think uh, where our connection was built. I remember I was young like that. Uh, he certainly has a lot of skills, and you see that. And, but he's got a lot of confidence, and I think it's just a matter of time for him. You know, it, you, you realize how good he is. He's actually he's in his second year of college, and uh, well, certainly he's learned a lot. He's in, he's in a top, he's in a top league actually, and he's certainly going to learn a lot more. He's going to be a lot better if he keeps improving. And with that, he put the entire league on notice for what was coming soon. In the offseason of 1998, Kobe would sign a six-year, $70 million contract, which would keep him with the Lakers until the 2004 offseason. The next offseason, the Lakers would hire Phil Jackson as their head coach after being let go by the Chicago Bulls. And all of a sudden, things in Kobe Bryant's career were beginning to look up, as he quickly became one of the best shooting guards in the league. In the 1999-2000 season, the Lakers would find their place in the NBA, as they would win 67 games, led by Shaq, who won MVP, and Kobe, who became the youngest player to make the all-defensive team. But they wouldn't see the struggle that was heading their way in the Western Conference Finals. Only team in the entire league not to experience at least one three-game losing streak this year is the LA Lakers. If it happens to them for the first time tonight, they're going home. Well, the first thing that the Lakers have to realize is they've got 12 minutes to play and it's only a 13-point game. Not anymore. <laughs> Steve Smith hits on the run and it's 15. I don't think you go to the hacker shot. Portland is playing too well. Just keep the heat on. Make them have to come up. But on off days, getting his team to believe. That's slammed down emphatically by Kobe Bryant on the Bonzi Wells shot. Yeah, but let's see if the Lakers can make something out of it. They got to come right back to Shaq. They don't. They go to Shaw instead. They're within five, just inside seven minutes. Shaquille O'Neal taking a toll, too. Kobe Bryant makes it a three-point game. Shaw. Lakers 
by one. The assertiveness, the offense. Now Kobe gives him the two point. It's Kobe again. Portland has three timeouts left. The Lakers have two. Bryant to shot. Lakers a four point lead. And now his assist to Shaquille O'Neal makes it a six point difference with 41 and 3 tenths seconds left. LA has outscored Portland 25 to 4. They've got the answer now. That's it. I'm not sure if the Lakers won as much as they escaped, but they show hard down 16. A huge comeback in the fourth quarter. Dunleavy and Jackson. The Lakers would end up making the NBA Finals for the first time since 1990, after coming back from a 15-point fourth-quarter deficit in Game 7. In the Finals, they faced the Indiana Pacers. They took care of the Pacers in Game 1, but in Game 2, another curveball was heading their way. He was one for eight. Kobe Bryant. Looks like he sprained his ankle when Kobe came down. He's on the floor. And he's writhing in pain, holding his left ankle. Meanwhile, Rose guns a three at the other end. Shaq takes the rebound. The Lakers have a break. Harper lays it in. Kobe Bryant would end up spraining his ankle after being intentionally undercut by Jalen Rose. And so the Lakers went without him for Game 3, and he would return in Game 4, where Kobe would face the biggest test of his career up until that point, with Shaq fouling out and him being the number one option. Sound familiar? Kobe Bryant, Bryant for three, it's short again, air ball, air ball. And so Kobe would have a huge opportunity to prove himself. He was just inside the line. And you know Kobe is going to go to work again. Here he is over Jackson. How good is this kid? Oh, because you got one to give. They won't shoot free throws. Shaw running one-hander. Followed in by Kobe Bryant. Again, offensive rebounds. The Lakers have a 3-1 lead. Jackson looking to throw it in against Shaq. Reggie turns and pumps it up. Off the rim, and the Lakers are the 2000 NBA champions. After the first championship, I'm happy. Matter of fact, in my mind, I'm done. Now I can go do what I want to do. If I'm here, we go to the parade, do that, boom, I jump on the plane, take the family back to Orlando. I'm sitting. Oh, Kobe and them got their first time shit. Can they get another one? Right. The next season is where the feud between Kobe and Shaq would begin to show itself, with Kobe being upset that Shaq wasn't working hard enough on his game during the offseason. So I admit a lot of times I didn't come into camp ready, because that's just how I got down. Because my thing is, I don't need to get ready for dunking. Right. I don't need to get ready. For, I don't need to get ready. I'll get ready when I get ready. So because I had you, I was able to just chill out into something, do what yeah, I do. Yeah, see, that's what, yeah. drove, that's what pissed me off. <laughs> that, that was it right there. Hey, that, that was... After beating the Sixers in the finals, the Lakers came into the next season with all the confidence in the world. And after another great season, the Lakers would again win the championship, joining the Boston Celtics and the Chicago Bulls as the only teams to three-peat in NBA history. But also at the time, the Kobe and Shaq feud had been steadily escalating. They're just defined a little territory that's, you know, their area. And I think that's kind of what you see in role playing a lot of times as a coach. You see guys want to have a space that they kind of define as this is my area. You know, Kobe's saying, don't don't talk about my game, don't well, I won't talk about yours. Going into next season, Shaq had gotten injured and refused to get surgery during the offseason, and instead waited until the start of the season to get the surgery, saying, quote, I got hurt on company time, 
so I'll heal on company time. Which would only amplify the tensions between the duo. And after a rough start to the season with Shaq off the court, he would soon return and it was back to business as usual. Except with Kobe taking on most of the ball handling and having a higher usage than ever before. And during this time, he would go on to have one of the best stretches of his career and one of the greatest stretches of all time. Especially when he's in the air. Kobe! Inside to Shaq, to drop pass to Kobe. This is a three-pointer straight away. But there comes the double team back outside to Kobe. Another long three-pointer. The basket that time. Kobe looking inside to Shaq. Can he make another three? Robert Ory comes right side to Kobe Bryant. Rodmanovich guarding it. Kobe for another three. Shaq out of the lane. Kobe's got it. Well, with, oh yeah, going again. Well, wouldn't Woo! you think, now you said this is just a thought, wouldn't you think you guard him? A play by Robert Orr. Lakers have numbers. Ori running the lane. Back to Kobe. Another three. Another three is good. And still giving him a little bit of room. The screen, no. Kobe behind him. In January of 2003, Kobe would break the record for three-pointers made in a game by hitting 12 against the Seattle Supersonics. And just one month later, he would have a stretch of games that was regarded as one of the greatest streaks of all time. There was a stretch um, in 03 uh, where Shaq was out with an injury and Phil called me up to his office and said, okay, we need you to really turn on the afterburners and start scoring wow. the ball if we have to win. So. I did, and I wound up scoring, I think it was nine straight games for 40 plus points. Nine straight? Nine straight games. After putting up the historic stretch, the Lakers would soon find themselves at the end of March, where they would face off against the Washington Wizards, which would be Michael Jordan's last time playing against Kobe Bryant. But Kobe still hadn't forgotten about something that Michael said to him in an earlier matchup, where he essentially told Kobe that he'll never be able to fill his shoes. So in their final matchup ever, Kobe decided to give him a farewell present. Fisher with it, wearing that distinctive headband out to Kobe, and he opens things up for the Lakers' 19-footer. Jordan, five on the shot clock, Kobe, a long three-pointer, and he buries that one to Kobe. Into the lane, oh, nice move. Wing to Kobe. Kobe looking in the corner, instead stops. Oh, a long three-pointer. Now left side to Kobe again, turn around, far away, jump shot is good. Kobe, five quick points. Four, three, Kobe wants to go. He pulls up. Oh! Their first seven field goal attempts. Kobe's got it 19 for the right of the lane. Good again! And has it Gennaro Pargo running in the corner. Kobe again! Picked up by Simmons. Wants to turn baseline, squares up. Jordan returns. Kobe's got the from downtown. Because of the Lakers lost to the 198. Kobe returns baseline. This is incredible. The Lakers as a team have 38 points, and Kobe's got. 30 of them. Some trash. He's fun to be around, and that was a nice looking shot. Oh, jump shot by Kobe again at the other end. Another triple for Kobe. Ten on the shot clock. Kobe's going to buy Lou. It's in his range this week. Oh, it's going up. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Comes Kobe working against Kwame Brown. Cross over. Pull up. Jump shot. Good again. You better take a timeout, Doug. I think a timeout may be in order. The Kobe would go on to score 55 points in the game, with 42 of those coming in the first half, which was a Laker record at the time. And with that, Kobe would show Michael that the league would be in good hands for a long time. The Lakers would go back to the playoffs, 
but they would run into trouble, as they would be beaten in the second round by the eventual champion San Antonio Spurs. Coming into the 2003-2004 season, the Lakers had made some major upgrades to their roster. They would add veterans and Hall of Famers Carl Malone and Gary Payton to the roster, so they had high expectations coming into the season. But their job was only made more difficult due to something that happened before the start of the season. It's been nearly a decade now since you know what you went through in Eagle with sexual assault, charges obviously. I'm innocent. I didn't force her to do anything against her will. And, uh, I had to separate myself. Because going through that, that time, I felt like there's so many things coming at once. It was just becoming very, very confusing. I had to organize things. So I created the Black Mamba. as he's known as. So Kobe has to deal with these issues and the, um, all the personal challenges. The Black Mamba steps on the court and does what he does. Started by Patterson, staying outside the arc, dribbling. Patterson keeps his feet. Kobe forces, oh! He made it! <laughs> he threw it in! What a hey, shot! Unbelievable shot. I'm telling you, Coming out of the timeout to the chance of the ever-familiar beat L.A. One second remaining in the regular season, possibly. Out to Kobe. Throw away high. What a way to finish. Are you kidding me? Are you? That's the way to end the regular season again. That's the way you end it. Kobe put it in the first overtime with a miracle three. Wins it in the second overtime with... The Lakers would then find themselves back in the NBA Finals and go up against the Detroit Pistons led by Ben Wallace. After a short series, the Pistons shocked the Lakers by beating them in just five games. And with this came the questions surrounding the looming free agency of Kobe Bryant. I didn't get any of that because we were looking for homes. Right. We were actually looking for homes in Chicago, researching schools, um, places to live. So that was true, you were going to go to the Bulls? Yeah, but that's the signed off on moving out to, uh, I think it was Lake Forest, I think it was. Chicago, and uh, went on a vacation to Italy. I got a phone call, Rob Palenka called, and he said, Shaq just requested a trade. I was like, well, there goes Chicago. There's, there's no way the Lakers are gonna lose me and Shaq in the same year. After Kobe agreed to re-sign with the Lakers, and Shaq deciding to request a trade, Phil Jackson was let go by the team as the Lakers failed to renew his contract. And Phil would later say in a book, that Kobe Bryant in the 2003-2004 season was, quote, uncoachable. The 2004-2005 season was Kobe's first season officially on his own. The Lakers, because of this man, Kobe Bryant, can take over. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Dwight Howard. Oh, boy. <laughs> But this season would be a failure due to injuries to both Kobe himself and the rest of the roster. The 2005-2006 season would see the revival of Kobe's status as an elite player in the NBA, with Phil Jackson returning to the Lakers and Kobe welcoming the decision. And while their relationship had been saved, he was still surrounded by a subpar roster, and this meant that he needed to carry the biggest offensive load in his career up until that point. And he would end up putting up some of the greatest performances we've ever seen. Long rebound for Kobe. Lakers lead early. Getting the run right. Nobody's ball bound. You may have come over your back as you're going up. Good point. Kobe. Two for two. Who's he get to get to it? Kobe on the run. Up against Griffin with a spin. And the Lakers. That was a terrific play. Very quick. He's trying to make a statement for his teammates. Kobe on the crossover. Got it again. He's got 46. Kobe has now the numbers. But boy, he's trying to make his own statement. Off the reverse, he does. Lakers by 21! Yes! A new career best in the Kobe's in 58! Nobody else in Kobe can't get it. <laughs> now Kobe for three! I don't believe it! Incredible! 
95, 61. Adds right. to his career. Okay. Okay. 62 for Kobe. Hey, I take it back. <laughs> he is good, but he has more than Dallas has. Phil Jackson asked me to ask Kobe if he wanted to go in uh, the fourth, the beginning of the fourth quarter and try to get 70. And Kobe looked up at the scoreboard. He said, we were up by about 30. And he said, no, I'm not going to go in. Um, we don't need it tonight. I'll get it another night. Double-double just about every night. Kobe is back in and out of moment. He's still going to be bad. They're falling behind. So he's based on the ball. Well, yeah. He can get through the ball and see if he can add to it. Yes, he does. Right now. That tells you what you're going to do. Kobe again. Here's Kobe. Trying to move around both feet. Trying to put him up. Finally shoots. Caught it in the foul. Hey, is he talking to you? He didn't say a word. Got 44. Kobe again. Yes, sir. 22 on the night. Knocked away by Kobe. Great hustle by Kobe. He's going to score. And dunk Lakers lead. The down Lakers lead 105 96. Another three. Five. The three again. Yes. <laughs> well, there's 70. Did you ever think you'd see a player in any one of our games put up 80 points? 81. Heading into the 2006 playoffs, the Lakers were a 7th seed and would find themselves matched up against the Phoenix Suns in the first round. And the foul. What, how serious was that? And the foul. Kobe will go to the line looking for the three point play as Kobe. How about a tap? They'd love to get into Nash's hands, and they do. Well, oh, knocked away, stolen by Parker. Oh, Here comes George to Kobe Bryant. Bryant inside, it's good, it's good. Walk to tip it, Bryant with the save. Oh, you got to get a shot here. Final seconds, Bryant for the win. But after taking a 3-1 lead in the series, things would take a turn. Kobe Bryant at the buzzer. Oh, he got it! Right between the eyes! Kobe for three. But Bryant is on some kind of streak right now. Kobe. Oh, what a shot by Kobe Bryant! It's a two! And the Lakers on top by one. No, it's a three! Kobe. Barbosa and Nash for the tie. Marion the rebound. Tim Thomas with the fake for the tie. 6.3 to play in regulation. <laughs> Timeout. Gotta stay out of those trapping corners. Kobe for three. Oh my goodness. Banking it in. I mean, this, this is far from over, Kevin. It's a five-point game now. Kobe's got 50 points. After losing to the Suns in the 2006 playoffs, Kobe would come into next season with a slightly new identity. The Lakers have notified the league. Bryant will wear 24 next year. Great players do that all the time. They want to re-challenge themselves. And I think for him, it was just changing numbers and just trying to wash away everything that he did with number eight and see if he can duplicate it with number 20. After going on a seven-game losing streak in the middle of the season, Kobe gave the team, and the fans watching, yet another stretch to remember. Kobe burns him. Five minutes gone by. As Kobe back to back. Yes! Another triple. Didn't get Udoka off his feet. Didn't make any difference, though, did it? Yeah, he said, if you're not going to jump, all right, stay down here. Kobe has got shot clock issues. And on the fall away, regains the lead for the Lakers, 60-59. You call that shot clock issues? Inside the arc, yes. 76-74. Now as McGraw runs after it. Kobe on the weave and kick out. 
Creates the contact. You can count it. Kobe to the free throw line, looking for the three-point play. Finding Kobe beyond the arc again. And again, comes through in the clutch. One-point game, 96-95. Kobe will get it from Kwame. Now Kobe for the tie. Got it! Did it again! Ties it at 98. They gave the three-pointer. Penetration on the final one. Yes! 102-100. Inside of four left. Six zero. Kobe, hard to believe. Are you Does kidding it? me? Unreal. Are you kidding me? How strong was that? A triple and a fall away in the corner with a shot. Three. <laughs> that is good. Unbelievable. He certainly knows how to finish off a quarter. <laughs> Kobe Bryant finds to find the seam in the zone and knocks it down. The rebound finds Bryant again. Great <laughs> contact. Head of the pack. Flush with the finish. In traffic over Miller. The way he's torturing. Kobe, a long three. Makes it unbelievable. Where, where Makes it look from? easy. And the Lakers come away with it. Kobe, hey. nifty move inside. Kobe with 32 and counting. Has 35. Kobe now. Tough fall away. You kidding me? <laughs> there you go. He is yeah. amazing. And Kobe on the finger roll, and they got him underneath. The dish, oh. Kobe underneath. There's Kwame jumping again on Gasol. Kobe, the distance. He's in 16. That doesn't help. This time, Butler's on. Doesn't deny him baseline and pays the price. We tried to force him baseline. And Kobe. A little closer in that time for his 21st point of the night. Think, you think it's going up? Kobe rises over Devin Brown and now has 27. Into the alley. Got it over Chandler. His 39th point of the night. Hornets with a 12-point third quarter. Kobe with 44. And he has just set a New Orleans Arena record for an opposing player. Kobe has 48. Kobe has 50. He's done it. Four straight games, 50 or more points. Only the second player in NBA history to ever accomplish that. However, they would find themselves once again matched up against the Phoenix Suns in the first round of the playoffs and would be sent home again. The 2008 season is where Kobe Bryant would be given another major opportunity to compete for a championship, as the 30-16 and 16 Lakers would make a trade that would land them all-star big man Pau Gasol. Is that a trick question? You tell me. They gave up Kwame Brown. Two Who first cares? rounders. I could, I could care less. I didn't do a salary for First years. of all, understand something. When you're giving up first round picks, if you are a quality team in, play, in playoff contention, it really doesn't mean that much. That's number one. Number two, and more importantly, Kwame Brown is gone. The City of Angels, Hollywood, just should be celebrating. Throw a parade already, whether you win a championship or not. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. The recipient of the 2007-2008 NBA Most Valuable Player Award presented by Kia. Congratulations. Last year, 
there are probably a lot of folks in here who's wondered if you'd have that uniform on again. What does it mean to you to stand here with this bunch and that trophy heading to the NBA Finals? Now, you know, this is, this is a dream come true. This is a dream come true, man. It's, it's such a blessing. And, uh, you know, to have it, to share with a group of guys that, you know, like brothers, it's, uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's an answer to prayer. And after beating the San Antonio Spurs in the conference finals, the Lakers would again make the NBA Finals and face the Boston Celtics. Olsen fires away. Gets a three. Just pouring it on. It's number one seed in such a tough conference. And without five of his big name, Baby Davis throws it down. After a 22-year absence, the Boston Celtics are NBA champions once again. The greatest single season to history is complete. Number 17, soon to be raised to the Raptors. Kobe, you won the MVP, you led the team to the finals. How do you characterize the season? Well, I mean, the goal was to win a championship. You know, it wasn't to win MVP or anything like that. It was to win a championship. So, you know, from that aspect, we failed. After losing the finals in six games, Kobe Bryant had an idea after the 2008 Olympics to help motivate his teammate Pau Gasol. And so we go into the <laughs> Olympic year that year. Yeah. We wound up playing Spain for the gold medal match, and we beat them. Uh -huh. And so now we come back to start training camp, and Pau shows up first day of, of training camp. I had my gold medal hanging in his locker. Oh no! And he, <laughs> I mean, like the one thing that he truly, truly loves is his country. Of course, like, that is like everything to him. So it just drove him crazy. Oh, I said, Pal, listen. He said, you're an asshole. I said, listen, Pal, you lost to the Celtics. You lost to us in a gold medal. Let's not make this three in a row this year. Wow. Okay? <laughs> Brian looks inside, finds Gasol. Gasol got it. And a foul. Got clock at two. He's got to put it up. Tries to bank it, does so, and a foul! Bryant, jab step, drive, puts it up, shot's good! Pop shot, the Lakers back up by one. And Peters, here comes the double. Up top to Fisher, straight on three, puts it in! Derek Fisher with another clutch three! Bryant looking double team, gets it to go. Now down to the playoffs. Here at the best. he's making points. Wow! As the buzzer sounds, it's official. The Lakers are NBA champions once again. LA wins the 2009 NBA title. But even after winning the 2009 finals, it still wouldn't be good enough for Kobe. You know, the championship the year before, on that run, KG was hurt. He was out. And uh, I didn't want to hear, well, the we, only reason you won that championship is because KG was hurt. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted all their horses there, and I wanted us to go head to head with them and uh, take them down. It wasn't a matter of if we can win the series. It's, it's, there, there is no other option. We have, we have to win it, I don't, by any means necessary. Because of his son, Mark, Action Jackson, the second, graduating from kind offense right now. Ryan on the pull-up, puts it in. Our test, that's a three. Bang! Lakers by six with a minute to play. 20 points for Ron Artest, under a minute remaining. Neither team with a foul to give. Ron Artest. Picks it out to Odom. Odom throws it ahead. The Lakers repeat back-to-back -back titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. You know what it means.
things as a team, but what about individually for you? He's got one more to Shaq. <laughs> So you can take that to the bank. <laughs> Do you think I was pissed when you got number five? Of course you were. Oh, no heated. doubt. I told my house. Up, no doubt. I, I bet, bet you did. No, I went crazy. Because <laughs> when I got four and you got four, I was like, hey, I yeah. got four, he got four, that's straight. When you got that fifth one, and yeah. then hold on. You said, I just wanted to get one more. To Absolutely. Show off. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> TV. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Yeah, ain't TV. nothing he can do about it either. After winning the championship in 2010, Kobe had a goal in mind that was becoming more and more achievable. Win one more championship to tie Michael Jordan's six. But that would eventually prove to be much easier said than done. They were miraculously swept out of the 2011 playoffs by the eventual champion Dallas Mavericks. And the 2011 offseason would mark the end of Phil Jackson's time in Los Angeles as he would enter retirement and be replaced by coach Mike Brown in the following season. This season, however, would be the year where the mileage Kobe had accumulated during his career would begin to show itself, as he would play through various injuries and miss another eight games due to injury in a lockout shortened season. The Lakers would be knocked out of the playoffs in five games by a young and up and coming Thunder team with Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. The 2012 offseason would see the Lakers begin to make what was thought to be their last effort to put Kobe Bryant in a winning situation. With him turning 35 next year and entering his 17th season in the league, the Lakers would end up trading for both Dwight Howard and Steve Nash in the offseason. And they were instantly seen as one of the favorites to make the NBA Finals. However, due to injuries to both Steve Nash and Dwight Howard during the season, Kobe was forced to put the team on his back. The Lakers were 25-29 and 29 at the 2013 All-Star break, and Kobe was determined to do whatever he could to get this team to the playoffs. Right foot, no, the right, right leg. Bryant in the lane, put it up, and in. Now all of a sudden that paint protection has gone awry. Here's Kobe going to the rim and scoring. 
Colby around the back, spinning, shooting, scoring. He's gone 32 minutes. Colby, three, yes! Big one, Brian from outside. 107, 104, three point game, five minutes left. Colby, guarded by the rookie, Harrison Barnes. Colby, one on one, isolated for the tie. He's got it, it's 107 all. The Mamba is looking like the Mamba. Eight from their reserves. Brian again going to work, falls down. Again, he's struggling. He came over and he said, what's it feel like when you uh, tear your Achilles tendon? And I said, did it feel like somebody kicked you in the back of your leg? And as soon as I said that, um, he just had this look on his face like bingo. I tried to figure out, is there a way that I could play through it? And I'm just going to shoot the free throws. I'm going to put all the pressure on my right leg and shoot these free throws because I do not want them selecting who is, who's going to shoot the free throw on our team and cost us a couple points. He could barely make it to the free throw line. It's my responsibility to do this. And so that's what I was thinking. Got it. I went out and shot the free throws, and then walking back, I could feel the tendon start rolling up higher and higher, and I was like, you know, it's probably not a good idea for me to continue. Don't ever question the heart, the emotion, the grit, the tenacity of that guy. After rehabbing his torn Achilles, Kobe made his first appearance in eight months on December 8th, 2013. However, after playing just six games, Kobe then suffered a knee injury that forced him to sit out the remainder of the season. After returning to the court in the 2014-2015 season, Kobe finally had the chance to pass his idol and big brother. Kobe now just a single point behind MJ. Kobe the drive, and it gets stripped of the basketball. Kobe Bryant scored his first career point from the free throw line in Madison Square Garden on November 5th, 1996. One point away from matching Michael Jordan for third all time, and now a single free throw away from becoming the NBA's third all-time leading scorer. Which is probably not the pageantry most people wanted to see, but effective nonetheless and appropriate because not only did his first point come to the, from the free throw line, but he scored many more points from the free throw line over his career than Michael Jordan has. Mm -hmm. Kobe's well, a great player. It's a great honor to be here now at this moment to see history. He deserves everything he gets, and, and, you know, and I think it's really classy for the Minnesota Timberwolves to stop the game and allow him to have this moment that he so richly deserves. Target center crowd on its feet. You see the congratulatory hugs from everybody around. Shortly after, however, Kobe would again face a severe injury. After coming back from yet another season-ending injury, Kobe would make it clear that this was the end. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've known for a while, right? And I've always said, you know, if anything changes, you know, then you know, I'll change my mind. But, you know, the, the problem became for me, it's, uh, you know, what, it, what does that really mean? I mean, a decision like this, you can't allow, you can't make that decision based on you know, outside circumstances. I mean, it has to be an internal decision. And, and finally, I just had to just accept the fact that I, just, I, I don't want to do this <laughs> anymore. You know, it's, it's, and I'm okay with it. Kobe Bryant had the ball, 
And I'll never forget saying the line, look who has the ball. Look who has the ball. <laughs> With half a minute to play, Bryant for the lead. Yes! Kobe Bryant gets the Lakers. Free throws for 60. You know, it's, uh, I can't believe how fast 20 years went by. I mean, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, to be standing here at center court with you guys, my teammates behind me, and uh, appreciating all this, you know, the journey that we've been on. You know, we've been through our ups and been through our downs. And uh, I think the most important part is that we all stayed together throughout. What can I say? Mamba out. But even after he was done, he still had more ideas for his life after basketball. Why did you start playing basketball? Because I loved it. All right, what do you love to do? Oh, I love to tell stories. And the Oscar goes to, don't say La La Land, don't say La La Land. Dear basketball, Glenn Key and Kobe! I thank love you, that you're you. carrying it around. I mean, what in the hell? Have you been carrying around? <laughs> <laughs> this is his book. It's called The Mamba Mentality. It's how I play. Kobe's got a, a book. This is a, is this a young adult book, would you say? Uh, middle grade. Middle grade, middle grade book. Grade. It is called Legacy and the Queen. And even in addition to this, he had even more planned. Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time. Stephen A., um, how are you processing this information right now, brother? Um, it's just devastating. Obviously, I found out uh, a few minutes after uh, the reports came out and, um, you know, I'm, it's a guy I've known for his entire career and um, I've known him pretty well and we've talked a lot and uh, throughout the years and knowing what a winner he was, uh, not just on the basketball court but off of it, uh, how inspirational he was, how motivational he was. We're not going to be able to say, hi, I got five, you got four. The fact that we're not going to be able to say, if we would stay together, we could have got 10. Those are the things that you, you can't get back. We are here to celebrate Greatness for 20 years. Artest looking, gets it to Bryant. Bryant dribbling, has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! Oh, he banks in the three! Excellence for 20 years. Uh, the Lakers, because of this man, Kobe Bryant, can take over. Kobe Bryant has never cheated the game. He has never cheated us as the fans. He's played through injuries. He's played hurt. No sleep. I, I, you played play the game, game with zero no, sleep. Zero sleep. Zero sleep. 
and we have five championship banners to show for it. We are retiring both your numbers because if you separated each of the accomplishments under those numbers, each of those players would qualify for the Hall of Fame. Kobe has 19 Laker records. He has nine NBA records. And let me just tell you a stat that's unbelievable. The man has scored 25 times over 50 points. He scored over 60 points five times. And then we all knew where we were when he scored 81 points. So this is what I want you to do, Laker Nation. We're going to watch this video of him and then he's gonna come out center court and wave to you guys. But let's give him the biggest, longest standing ovation that he's ever seen in his life, okay? Thank you, Please put your hands together for Kobe Bryant.